Hello, welcome to this uh, webinar. It's quite strange for me to talk to you without having you in front of me in a hall or, or a room, but uh, COVID times unfortunately oblige us to take certain measures and uh, to adopt new unusual procedures with respect to our normal habits. So I will try to give you my best uh, presentation possible about what we are doing regarding a uh, debated uh, topic and that is the deep stops in recreational and or technical diving. With this presentation I will try to show you what we are doing. You will see that there, there will be no precise take-home message. This will be an awareness presentation just to make you know what we are doing what are the results of our current research and where we are going in order to give you some better uh, information and some real take-home message we hope as soon as possible and mainly with your cooperation because bear in mind that the results that you will be seeing uh, have been possible only with the active participation of the divers, of you divers, who participated in our citizen science field research programs that produced the results that I'm going to show you shortly. Uh, this is <clears throat> a, uh, an outlook on uh, the research we have been doing over the past years on uh, deep stops. Uh, with the latest updates uh, regarding what we did on technical diving especially. It all started a long time ago when in the late 90s, actually in the early 90s, we started seeing something that uh, surprised us a bit. And that is that about 60% of the uh, decompression um, in these cases that we monitored uh, should not have happened. Uh, where what we now deserve, define undeserved and implied no uh, reasonable or evident mistake by the diver. Only 42% of the decompression illness cases implied mistakes and so, which means not respecting of decompression tables, errors in ascent, or similar. <clears throat> and so they might have been uh, defined as deserved. Uh, this has been, for the first time, published with uh, uh, big evidence back in 2017 <clears throat> when we reported about 40,000, uh, four, uh, 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 recreational dives that we could fully monitor with dive profile, electronic dive profile, bubble count, uh, uh, behavioral questionnaires, and so forth. One of the main results of that study, of studying 40,000 dives, as I said, was looking at the comparison between the production of circulating bubbles, venous gas emboli, VGE as we call them, as compared to the uh, gradient factor at the end of the dive, the so-called gradient factor high, uh, which is an index of inner gas supersaturation achieved by tissues by the time of uh, surfacing. If you look at this plot, you will see that there is a curve that steeps up and grows <clears throat> when a certain number on the horizontal axis is overcome. That number is, as you can see, 2. I show it with my cursor here. What is this 2? This is the level of bubbles that we can record by precordial doctor and or by echocardiography. And you will see that whenever the 
of the maximum allowed supersaturation in tissues is superated here, you see 0 0.8 means 80%, the number of bubbles increases dramatically up to uh, levels of 4. 4 uh, bubble level means bubbles that overcome and superate the noise itself of the heart. Whereas bubble counts lower than two means occasional bubbles every now and then uh, over the one minute observation uh, listening to the heart cycles. What is this? This is a way to express one of the values that the decompression tables are uh, calculated upon. That is the maximum allowed supersaturation of the leading compartment. This is something that we had already seen back in 1993 because we saw that the, the, the majority of cases of decompression illness and high bubbling was actually related to dives that uh, had a supersaturation of uh, the leading tissue that is the most saturated tissue in, in the group that we were considered over 80%. The analysis of 40,000 dives simply confirmed that. So whenever this gradient factor, this level of supersaturation is superated, the divers tend to bubble significantly. This was published, as I said, in, and this is a so-called box plot showing this difference and comparing the supersaturation uh, at the end of the dive in cases that uh, implied decompression illness here above the blue blot the blue uh, plot and below the supersaturation achieved by the cases who did not imply decompression illness the black plot below uh, you may wonder what quartiles are. Now, uh, I think you're all familiar with the Gauss curve, the Gauss bell, so-called. The Gauss bell is made of four parts, essentially. The so-called outliers, either the uh, most and less susceptibles on the two ends of the, of the uh, bell, and the median part, the larger part of the population, at the peak of, of the bell. Uh, you can divide this ideal bell in four parts, uh, accounting for 25% each, and this part is a quartile. This box plot are simply a linear presentation of a ghost bell. So you will see the outliers, the exceptional, the unusual ones here on the left, and here on the right, here and here, and the larger proportion of people concentrating in the middle 50%. Uh, the, this middle line here is what we call the median. The median is not the average. If you make an average between 0.49 and 115, you won't have 0.78 or 79. You will have a different figure. The median is actually the median value of the two center quartiles. So, in this case, the people who incurred in decompression illness out of 40,000 uh, recorded dives and 327 decompression illness cases had a supersaturation of 0 0.79. You remember what I showed you before? about the high bubble pe peaking, the high bubbles occurring when uh, supersaturation is over 0 0.8. Here we are. On the contrary, the ones who did not incur in the compression illness had shown the median value, as you can see, of 67, which means less than 70% of the maximum allowed supersaturation at the end of the dive. Now, what is strange about this? 
the strangest thing is that either the table and the uh, current majority of com dive computers tell you that you can surface if your allowed super saturation is 99. <clears throat> because this is the origin of the tables before uh, bubbles started to be monitored. Actually, the precursor, the uh, heralds of, of this were the Canadians of DCIH, DCIM, uh, the Canadian uh, Defense uh, Institute, uh, with uh, Professor Nishi, who actually devised uh, uh, decompression tables based on bubble production. And strange or not, uh, these tables are very compatible with the results that we are now seeing in terms of reduction of bubbling and therefore reduction of um, decompression in this uh, occurrence. So the message from this slide is that you can incur in a decompression illness even much before reaching the maximum allowed supersaturation that your computer or your table tell you that you can stand. So, based on this, what are we doing? In order to give you more precise information and possibly some predictive modalities that will allow you to dive and surface with less risk and less unpredictable, unpredictable risk, especially. One of the things that divers tend to do <clears throat> in order to reduce this decompression illness uh, uh, chance, so to speak, and to reduce the supersaturation of tissues on surfacing is introducing deep stops uh, in their dive profile. Uh, this has been done uh, by large empirically by the divers, uh, even if some researchers produced a number of algorithms that are based on, on this uh, concept. Uh, it may seem funny that actually the first one who ever produced such a such a, 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 an algorithm was the very inventor of the current decompression tables, and that is John Scott Haldane, who actually recommended uh, halving the uh, depth or the pressure, the, the, the environment pressure, the absolute pressure, in order to reduce the uh, bubbling and the decompression stress. But nevertheless, he was not so uh, listened afterwards, afterwards, after a while, and tables went another way. Uh, <clears throat> now the question is, unless you follow a uh, well-designed study, is it advisable for you to insert additional stops irrespective of what your computer tells you or the tables that you are following tell you to do? And the answer is no. Uh, you should not introduce any stop arbitrarily unless you really know what you're doing or you are following a precisely set up algorithm that is uh, following something that has been studied and tested on a sufficient number of uh, for a sufficient number of times uh, do we have algorithms that uh, include deep stops or uh, call them some stops, different from the classical Haldanian uh, tables on the market? Yes, we do. Uh, there are many. Um, one that is not shown on this slide is the uh, famous uh, Bruce Vinke's uh, RGBM, Reduced Gradient Bubble Model that allows you to uh, actually include some deep stops and depending on what you include in your dive profile will calculate accordingly and I would say uh, reliably enough. After Haldane, the precursor of uh, the deep stop theory was uh, Pyle, who actually designed the tables based on uh, actually a biological observation. He was, uh, he, uh, as an ichthyologist, was studying fishes 
and was seeing that uh, in order to take fishes up alive and put them in his aquarium, uh, the divers needed to decompress their bladder. And more or less, they decompressed their bladder at the mid of the ascent profile. Now, the funny thing is that the divers who uh, decompress fish, fishes also suffered far less decompression illness than the divers who ascended without decompression fishes. And so this is the real origin of the pile model, which, which obviously was then elaborated mathematically into a real algorithm. So you have, yes, we have models that can guide you to deep stops. Then there is the half depth uh, model, which is, after all, nothing else than the Haldanian model, uh, and a variation of the half depth, which is the half ambient pressure, uh, half absolute pressure, which uh, normally differs from half depth by, by uh, a ratio of five meters, more or less. Not, not more or less, five meters, actually, that's <laughs> mathematics. So yes, we do have some models to follow. Um, we started to apply this theory <clears throat> uh, in a relatively innovative way back in, nine, in the 90s, in the early 90s, with the so-called Marben study. Uh, Marben stands for uh, Maroni and Bennett. I had the honor to, to do this study together with Professor Peter Bennett. Um, the result of this study, which is uh, which has been published <clears throat> on the uh, the CN Hyperbaric Medicine Journal, uh, is what you can read on the left of this uh, slide. The introduction of a deep stop during the compression ascent appears to significantly decrease Doppler recorded bubbles and predicted gas tensions in the fast tissue, which may relate to actual gas exchange within the spinal cord. What did we study? normal recreational dives between 18 and 40 meters depth with either minimum deco or no uh, mandatory deco and we studied a deep stop at about half the depth of the dive we did that over 50 uh, 500 dives performed by a number of individuals this has been published uh, in 2004 and this is the title of the paper that you can still find easily on the web. Uh, the main results of that study were uh, the following. Dives without any stop produced very high bubble levels. Dives with a safety stop, the recommended normal safety stop, produced less bubbles. Dives with the deep stop plus the safety stop produced significantly less or virtually no bubble at the end of the dive. <clears throat> this complex table show you, shows you the uh, profiles that we compared. As you can see, there are three profiles with deep stop, 15 plus 6, 15 plus 6, 15 plus 6. The dives were at 30 meter, the study dives. Uh, the three profiles were uh, differentiated by the speed of ascent. So we did three profiles with 3 meter per minute speed of ascent, three profiles with 10 meter per minute and two profiles with 18 meter per minute, because we didn't want to uh, have divers ascending at 18 meter per minute without any safety stop. Uh, we considered it uh, too dangerous at that time. Now you will see that <clears throat> the bubble grades uh, were very low when, when we had the deep stop and the lowest value 179 average uh, in the uh, expanded uh, Spencer scale, which is the method we used to measure bubbles 
and in the classical Spencer scale, uh, which is the reference mo uh, model we used, are the lowest here. 10 meters per minute speed of ascent, deep stop with an average surfacing saturation of the highest, uh, uh, the, the, the fastest tissue of 25%. Average sur uh, surface saturation of the 10 minutes tissue, medium tissue, 52 as opposed to 100, uh, which is the maximum allowed, and a uh, bubble score ranging between, let's say, 2 and 2.5, as opposed to bubble scores quite higher when the deep stop was not used, as you can see in the other uh, boxes of this plot. So this study actually confirmed to us that in that kind of recreational diving, the introduction of a deep stop coupled with a speed of ascent of 10 meters per minute max was the safest way to ascend with respect to bubble production. The two greenish lines are the ones that produced the best results. There is also a difference in the uh, safety of speed of ascent. It is not always true that a very slow speed of ascent is safer. As you can see, a very slow speed of ascent, three meters per minute, was the one that produced actually more bubbles than the others. Uh, as far as uh, compared safety, 10 and 18 meters per minute are more or less the same, but adding the deep stop, the 10 meter per minute speed of ascent actually produced much less bubbles than any other ascent profile. Over that study and after that study, we introduced a model and an algorithm which we called, which I called the proportional M value reduction concept. In other words, the fastest the tissue uh, the difference is the percent reduction of the M value that we imposed based on um, the kind of dive that we were considering at that time. Uh, this was uh, studied on a sample of 14 volunteers during 20 dry tests in a chamber involving 210 dives and uh, uh, monitored with 388 precordial Doppler readings. Uh, this model is not yet public, although we use it to back to do the back analysis of the decompression uh, risk, what we call the decompression risk analysis that uh, we use to study and to evaluate the uh, inherent risk of any dive profile. This is the result of applying this model and comparing it to a very standard Bullman uh, algorithm, the one that you may find in most current decompression tables and in most uh, current uh, decompression computers on the market. Using the Bullman model with those simulated dives in the chamber, we had 16.5% divers with zero bubbles, 58% divers with low grade bubbles, 25% divers with high bubble grades, and only 0.5% divers with a lot of bubbles, what we call the high bubble grade plus, as opposed to 16 actually almost 61% zero bubbles when we adopted the uh, experimental model PMRC. 39.2% low bubble grades, zero high bubble grades, zero high bubble grades plus. Which means that by using the PMRC approach to ascent from recreational dive pro, uh, from a recreational dive profile, we could actually zero the uh, occurrence of very high bubble grades. 
and the, per the maximum, the uh, majority of, of the dives was, was actually bubble free. We confirmed this study and these results by not only uh, recording bubble, uh, bub uh, bubble recording, but also by echocardiography bubble recording. And we applied the same method to technical diving. Retrospectively, we analyzed a number of technical dives recently. This was done two years ago at the uh, Y40 pool in uh, Padua. And when applying the same comparison between the decompression illness cases and the non-decompression illness cases after technical diving, uh, we saw that technical divers, as compared to recreational divers, tend to do uh, slightly higher uh, risk dives. So it's not surprising that their average uh, supersaturation on ascent is slightly higher than the one you can find in normal recreational divers. You may remember that in the box plot of normal recreational divers, uh, we found 0.79 as the medium uh, supersaturation of gas on a set. In the uh, technical diving community, this uh, gradient, uh, this supersaturation is slightly higher and we have a 0.88 gradient factor high on uh, a set. Whereas the uh, maximum achieved supersaturation in both groups uh, is, is very similar. Not surprising that the technical divers may achieve a higher supersaturation due to the fact that they tend to do uh, slightly more aggressive dives. Definitely they do deco dives as opposed to the majority, the vast majority of, <coughs> of uh, divers uh, or recreational divers who do not decompression dives. But it is still very surprising that we have decompression illness both in recreational diving and in technical diving with gradient factors at surfacing which are absolutely normal according to the uh, allowed limits or to the recommended limits by the current uh, dive computers or dive tables because these limits are well within the permitted uh, supersaturation, which is considered safe by the current uh, reference uh, referral computers or uh, tables. So we needed to study a bit more and replicate what we had done with the original Marvin study and uh, which ended up in the PMRC model. And we compared two very similar decompression procedures with a group of uh, technical divers at the Y40 pool in uh, Padua. This was done by pre-setting the gradient factor. The first study that I mentioned was done by analyzing the free behavior of divers and we derived and calculated the gradient factor afterwards. In this case, we were dealing with a community of highly experienced uh, technical divers. And so we compared two different settings of gradient factors. Also according to what is a very common habit of the, of the technical diving community, that is that the diver himself or herself sets the preferred gradient factors, both low and, and high, according to what he or she expects uh, to, uh, to, to happen or accepts to incur in uh, when considering the risk, the decompression risk. I, I think I don't need to remind you that a gradient factor setting is simply the adjustment of exposure limits by expressing them as a fraction of the maximum allowed limit for that particular tissue 
or for that particular compartment. This is an example of how you can change your uh, ascent profile by different settings <coughs> in a gradient factor low and high. For example, in blue you have a gradient factor of 1090, in red a gradient factor of 2070, and so on and so forth. So, with this gradient factor, a GF 1090, uh, you will have a deep stop, a very deep stop, a deep, deep stop, because you will stop when you reach 10% of the maximum allowed supersaturation, virtually almost immediately or very shortly after leaving the bottom. If you uh, have a 90%, uh, if you have, sorry, if you have a 70% higher uh, gradient factor, it means that you will only ascend when you are at 70% of the maximum allowed supersaturation. It means that you will have to wait some time before you leave the surface. You will have to desaturate before you hit the surface. Whereas if you accept to ascend when you are 100% supersaturated as compared to the maximum allowed value, you will obviously ascend and surface earlier than if adopting a lower gradient factor high. This is another example for it, of how you can have a shallow first stop if you accept, sorry, here we are, if you accept a uh, gradient factor low uh, of 100%, which means that you will be allowed time to ascend from your bottom depth until you reach a supersaturation in the first tissue that reaches the higher level uh, equal to 100%. It's, it's a complex matter and this is also why we do not recommend to any diver to, to do this without really knowing what gradient factors are, having studied Baker's uh, book on gradient factors and so on, really understanding what you're what you're playing with, because you may hurt yourself if you don't, if you don't know exactly what you do, uh, playing with this number. Just bear in mind that the lower the deep, uh, the gradient factor low is, the deeper you will stop, first stop. The higher the gradient uh, factor low is, the shallower will be your first stop, close to the surface. The lower your gradient factor high is, the longer time you will stay in the water. And the, the higher your gradient factor high is, the shorter time you will stay in the water. Which means either low or high risk, or in, the other, in, in terms of gradient factor high, uh, either high or low risk. So, this is what we are playing around, and this is what we based our research on with a group of technical divers. These were the two profiles that we compared. <coughs> the so-called shallow stop profile. As you can see, the depth is the maximum of the uh, uh, Y40 pool, 42 meters. Uh, we had a bottom time equal for both dives and a total running time equal for both dives. 40 minutes bottom time, 77 minutes running run time. The deco parameters for the shallow stop profile were 5 minutes at 9 meter, 26 minutes at 6 meters and 3 minutes at 3 meters. This means that at this depth there was a change of breathing mix going to 50-50 uh, 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 enriched air nitrox. The deep stop profile was, as shown in the slide, 
40 minutes at 21 meter, 3 minutes at 18, 3 minutes at 15, 3 minutes at 12, 4 minutes at 9, 12 minutes at 6, and 6 minutes at 3 meters. <clears throat> We studied 18 subjects, 17 males, one female, who performed 36 dives, and they were all uh, experienced GOE technical divers. Uh, in this table, you will see the uh, number of values, the uh, height, the weight, the anthropometric data of the participants. There were no differences, no significant differences between the dives as concerning maximum depth, obviously the pool is the same, as concerning running time, we paid attention to have the same running time and the same bottom time, and even if there was a slight difference this was not significant when concerning the surface gradient factor for both shallow and shallow stop and deep stop dives. Surface gradient factor is actually the gradient factor not at the end of the last uh, deco stop, but when you hit the surface. And we have, you, you have a method, we have a method to actually uh, calculate that as well, because that is actually where you hit the risk Hard. I mean, this is when you hit the atmosphere and you actually come out of the water and confront yourself with one ATA environment pressure that you have the real problem. Uh, there were differences, significant differences for both profiles in terms of physiological effects. Both profiles implied a cellular effect on the red blood cells which were actually reduced after the dives on both kind of dives and on hemoglobin as measured by pinprick uh, according to our uh, diving safety lab uh, modality so the dives per se either with or without a deep stop produced some significant effects on the blood but did not produce any significant difference on hydration the dehydration or uh, or the hydration status of the divers was the same after the two dives both with and without deep stops where we found a significant difference between the two profiles is with bubbles. And these were bubbles not measured acoustically, but visualized, the photographs, photographed with uh, cardio echography after the dive. We performed uh, echography immediately after the dive, 15 minutes after, and then at 15 minutes interval for a relatively long time after the dive and here you can see the difference in bubbling in divers who followed the shallow stop profile what we call the Bullman uh, profile and the deep stop profile as you can see the bubble grade is significantly different between the uh, Bullman model, no deep stop, and the deep stop profile that I showed you there before. With bubble grades, which never, which never reached level two in the uh, deep stop group, and were always above level two, up until uh, almost one hour after the dive uh, with the Bullman uh, shallow stop profile. Plotting it, this is the result. 
and the difference of the two uh, graphs of the two columns is definitely significant whereby the shadow stop produces significantly more bubbles of higher bubble grain <coughs> than the deep stop profile. We also adopted a new predictive model which is quite innovative that we are now studying with a group of uh, Brazilian uh, colleagues uh, that tries to anticipate the bubble production by different parameters that can be recorded directly on the diver while, while diving, so before he even starts the ascent and uh, during the ascent. On the uh, left, there is the estimated bubble count adopting this new novel parameter with the deep stop, uh, with the shallow stop uh, profile. The estimated production of bubble is very similar to that uh, high peak, immediate, uh, uh, high level production at the at the uh, uh, at surfacing that you have seen uh, in the previous plots, and the estimated number of bubbles of the shallow stop profile was 600 bubbles per uh, frame in the echocardio in the echocardiogram, whereas the uh, production of bubbles with the deep stop profile resemble the, the curve that we observed really and the estimated number of bubbles was 440 which also is compatible with what we observed on the echocardiography frames. This is something that promises to be a very interesting um, tool that will hopefully allow us to better predict decompression stress in the near future. Just to show you what bubbles are, look at this. This is the image of the heart that we monitor after the dies through echocardiography. This is a so-called four-chamber image. This is the right ventricle. This is the um, left ventricle. These white dots, here it's almost a, a curtain of white dots uh, are the bubbles as you can see them passing with the blood flow through the heart. This is a real echocardiogram, echocardiogram taken after a shallow stop dive. As you can see the left ventricle is full of bubbles, uh, the right ventricle is full of bubbles and many bubbles pass on the left ventricle, which means that they can go in the arterial circulation. This is a, a slightly worse image in terms of four chamber uh, image, but as you can see, there is virtually no bubble in the uh, right ventricle and on, only occasional signals passing on the right, on the left ventricle, which means that the deep stop did not actually produce any significant bubble in this group of uh, technical diving doing a technical dive even if not at a very deep dive a, a very deep depth only 42 meters but the dive was long 40 minutes and the runtime was long 77 minutes we repeated the study in the uk in a quarry recently uh, the dive was uh, a bit more provocative, uh, 50 meters for 25 minutes, runtime 60 minutes, and we were using not open circuit but rebreather at that time. Uh, we compared gradient factor setting 2085 versus 5075. We had seven divers doing 14 dives. The bubble grades were more or less similar without a really significant um, difference. But the production of bubbles, what we call the bubble wave, was definitely different. And the uh, more conservative Gradient factor setting apparently 
more conservative gradient factor setting uh, produced a different wave of bubbles. I have actually uh, some problems in defining which of these two is more or less conservative because this is more conservative in terms of deep stop but slightly less conservative in terms of gradient factor high that is surfacing. This one is definitely more conservative as far as surfacing but slightly less conservative as far as the first deep stop. And here we would enter into a, an endless discussion on which compartments you load or uh, uh, wash out by changing gradient factors. But I will not go into, the, into, into deeper details about this. Just show that, just see that the bubble wave is definitely different. With uh, a lower gradient factor low, you produce bubbles, not immediately, but you have a peak of bubbles around 45 minutes after the dive. With a different gradient factor, 50, 75, you produce bubble a bit faster within the first 30 minutes, but then they wean out and they wash out slightly better. And you end up with less bubbles at one and a half hour after the dive and even one hour after the dive and 75 minutes after the dive. So you seem to produce a little bit, bit more bubbles immediately, but then to wash them out more efficiently over time. This may be a result of keeping the gradient factor high, uh, lower than in the first uh, profile. This second run of, of tests were, did not provide clear results <clears throat> as, as the one at Y40, but it's definitely intriguing and we are now trying to understand in better detail what the bubble wave means. But if we consider that bubbles are pro-inflammatory factors, the more you keep them into your circulation, the worse. The, the faster you wash them out, probably the best. So even here, keeping a gradient factor high lower could result into being more protective than keeping it, keeping it higher as in the, this profile. So this is what we are doing now, as I was anticipating. And now we are continuing with comparing these dives with groups of technical divers until we will have not only interesting results, but sufficient numbers. We could tell you something about normal recreational diving after having analyzed 40,000 dives. And now we almost have reached 100,000 uh, dives in our database. So we have numbers to reason on and to talk to you about. With the technical diving community, we are, we are barely reaching a few hundreds now, and they are not enough yet. We will need your participation. We will need to keep on working with the technical diving community to collect data, to compare data, and to keep on doing our research, uh, which actually focuses at defining the risk factors as compared to the habits of the recreational diving community. So to identify the best possible behavior, not only the best ascent, but the best dive profile possible that would allow all of us to enjoy our dives while keeping them as safe as possible. We are also doing that with your cooperation by comparing what you actually do. For example, to see whether by recording your dives and sending them to our database, you are actually doing what we all recommend. Plan the dive and dive the plan. Are we sure that after planning the dive, you are diving the plan or we are diving the plan? Memory 
is fallacious. Memory tricks us. So we have to record data and to compare data by actually looking at the real electronic dye profile we, we did as compared to what we had planned to do. Uh, and this will provide us with uh, unvaluable uh, tools to improve our diving skills, to improve our briefings and debriefings, to improve our knowledge and awareness about safety of diving. Uh, so be ready to participate in this dedicated survey for technical diving that we are launching and that you will be soon be more informed about so that we can produce a second paper like this one that you are seeing on the right end of the of the slide which was uh, referred to normal recreational diving and we now intend to produce a second paper which will be focused on the technical diving community in order to uh, answer to the need of clarity and safety that the entire diving, recreational diving community is uh, looking for. Thank you very much. Uh, any question you can address to the uh, email address that you see there. Feel free to write to us, ask whatever you want. We will make, we will do our best to answer in the shortest time possible. Thanks again. Enjoy your lives.